Hey, Antonio, congratulations on making it to the Super Bowl. Um, I guess just just talk about uh, you're going to be facing one of your old teammates, Le'Veon Bell. I guess talk about the journey that you and him have made since your time in Pittsburgh. And what were some memories of having him as a teammate during that time in your career? Uh, it's been a blessing, man, uh, to see him flourish and, and being as a moment and opportunity. Uh, I know he don't take for granted. Uh, just to see the, the work we put in, uh, the things we uh, persevered through, uh, to be in this position, uh, I'm, I'm sure he's grateful. Okay, we're going to go over to Jenna Lane from ESPN. Hey, Antonio, I know it was difficult for you suffering that knee injury. Can you just give us an update on that and how you're feeling and what kind of things you're doing to hopefully get better in time for the game? Well, uh, I was at practice today. Uh, going over the details, and uh, I continue to arrow point it up as the weeks keep continue to unfold. Okay, we're going to go over to Karen Garrison. Hi, Antonio. How you doing? Good. Uh, Tom Brady just talked a little bit about your relationship and uh, how he enjoys helping people. How much of that uh, help by Tom has kind of gotten you back into the game and where you are right now? I mean, a lot of his help has uh, gotten me uh, in the game and helped me get to this point where I'm at right now. You know, helped me grow as a person, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally. And uh, he kind of put some things in perspective, uh, sharpening my tool, uh, making sure uh, that I got a plans upon my goals and I'm not letting uh, any outside noise diffuse uh, that plan. We'll go over to Michael McQuaid. Hey, Antonio. Um, you've got a lot of fans over here in Ireland and we just want to congratulate you obviously getting to the big game this weekend. Um, you've had some relevant man so far in your career. How are you finding this whole prep this week? Obviously very virtual. Do you miss the whole media day atmosphere? Well, I'm just extremely grateful to be in this position uh, here preparing with my teammates to uh, accomplish our goal. Thanks, man. Antonio, can you hear me? Yeah, hey. All right, we'll go over to Phil Jones. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, hey. Hey, good afternoon, Antonio. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. Excellent. Uh, your path from Pittsburgh to the Super Bowl has been tumultuous, to say the least. Uh, what does it mean to you to be here right now? I'm just extremely grateful. Uh, extremely grateful, man. Uh, here with my teammates, uh, preparing to do what we uh, set out to do, man. I'm just extremely grateful. Appreciation, gratitude, and uh, extremely We're going to go to Sarah Walsh from the NFL Network. Hi, Antonio. Um, what, would ha what would it take, I guess, to keep you off the field Sunday, given what's on the line for you and this team? Well, I'm just focused on uh, preparation for the game, and I'm not worried too much of uh, what that all entails. Okay, we're going to go over to Greg Allman. Hey, Antonio, I, I know your your mind is on Sunday, but you'll be a free agent in the spring. How important is it for you to be able to come back and be a part of this team again next year? Well, that's all for next year, man. I'll be doing myself and my teammates a dis, you know, disservice uh, to talk about next year. You know, we just singly focus on this game ahead of us and the preparation of what all that entails. We're going to go over to Tom Rock from Newsday. AB, hey, did you see this uh, this opportunity with the Bucks as a last chance in the NFL for yourself? You said that I see the opportunity? You, did you see it as a, as a last chance to sort of, um, you know, prove yourself and prove your dad was wrong? Not really. Uh, I just think it was my only chance to be able to prove not only the doubters, I just proved it myself. You know, I'm still a high, high-end football player. I still love the game. Uh, 
still love to compete and uh, got to prove it to myself. You know, I never gave up or gave in. I stayed uh, consistent, uh, persistent to, to my goals and my vision. And I'm um, here right now and I'm grateful. We'll go to Rick Stroud. Hello, AB? Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you. Thanks, man. Hey, uh, at the end of the season, you know, Tom Brady talks about the caring that he has for his teammates. I think the Bucks do that as well with BA. At the end of the regular season, you had a couple of little pop passes, things, you you know, that, that earned you, uh, that you earned some bonus money for. What did that mean to you that they would go to that extent and make sure that, you know, you accomplished that as, as, as you had hoped to? I mean, that was all great, man. But right now, our focus is just, you know, I'll be doing a just service to, to talk about things that are not uh, important to this game. Uh, right now, we just, I'm just singly focused on the, the justice of being here and doing everything for this game and for my teammates and our best interest. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. Uh, okay, we're going to go over to Zinni Abraham. Uh, Mr. Brown, great to see you there. And uh, I want to ask you, contrast your time with the Raiders with the Buccaneers because I was a big fan of you with the Raiders and uh, don't want to get off on a tangent there, but uh, I'm glad to see you in a better place. Your thoughts? I'm just excited to be here. Uh, like I said before, I'll be doing this disservice uh, to not take all my energy and focus on this game. Uh, I'm just grateful to be in this position. Uh, to represent Tampa Bay Bucks and to serve my teammates in regards of doing whatever we have to do to win. Okay, we're going to go over to Adam Beasley. Antonio, how did you use your suspension to grow as a player and a person? Well, I just stayed disciplined, uh, stayed dedicated uh, to the vision or whatever was my goals in regards to getting back in this moment. And, uh, He's doing all the right things. We're going to go to Mike Jones from USA Today. And tell you, when you talk about staying disciplined and doing all the right things, what were some of those things and what did you learn? What did you change um, to be able to get back to here? Well, it's all about, you know, controlling your emotion. Physically, mentally, when, when you don't feel good, uh, not being a slingshot when others come at me. You know, uh, learning how to control my attitude, uh, not letting my emotions get the best of me. Even if I feel someone was wrong for doing what they did, you know, just being forgiven and just staying, staying positive. Okay, we're going to go to Brooke Pryor from ESPN. Hey, Antonio, you mentioned the Bucks were your only chance to, po to prove doubters wrongs. Just to clarify, did you have any other offers before signing in Tampa? And after your time out of the league, did you think you deserved another chance? All right now, it's about the Tampa Bay Bucks and the Super Bowl. That's my focus. I've been doing a disservice here to talk about things that uh, don't matter upon that such. I'm just grateful to be here. It's a great moment for not only me, my teammates, Tampa Bay, the whole city of Tampa. Uh, it's a blessing to be here. We're going to go to Christopher Holmes from NFL Chile. Hi, Antonio. How are you doing? How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Uh, just wanted to, to ask if you could elaborate on how this locker room embraced you uh, since you arrived late in the season and how the adaptation was. Uh, these guys really have Embrace me, you know, they didn't let uh, words on the screen or what they heard about. I um, mean, they took me in. Uh, it's been a tremendous honor to be here, uh, to play with some great guys in the locker room. Uh, the coaching staff has embraced me, uh, will welcome me with open arms. And I'm forever grateful for these guys and uh, really appreciate it for the opportunity. And uh, I pay these guys back with my work ethic, uh, my production, and uh, my leadership in regards to helping the young guys and everybody here. We're going to go over to Mark Daniels. Hey, Antonio. Um, you obviously, you weren't in New England for that long, but it seemed like you and Tom Brady connected fairly quickly. Um, one, 
what was it about Tom that allowed you to connect so quickly? And, and two, was that connection sort of felt instantly when you, when you practiced there in New England? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Tom's been around the game for a long time. I've seen a lot of players. Uh, I think it was just amazing time, you know, to be there. Uh, you know, people hear about you, see you on TV, uh, but to see uh, it in person and uh, to see the detail, to see my work ethic, uh, you see everything, man. We just have so much in common. So uh, it was a grateful, grateful time and, and to be here with him right now. Uh, it's a blessing. I'm going to go to Joshua Allen. Hey, Antonio, how we doing? How you doing? Good. Uh, you had kind of an unconventional route to get here to Tampa. Um, yeah. How has that journey been going from, obviously, the Raiders to the Patriots um, now to Tampa Bay and, you know, with Le Le'Veon Bell kind of on that similar journey. Can you just speak on that and have you spoke with him as well? I mean, it's a journey for every player at this point in, in life, a career. It's made up and down adversity. But one thing I'll say is you got to be persistent, got to be disciplined, and you can never give up. And when you follow those three phases, uh, make a plan, have goals, uh, have good people in your corner that believe in you and support you. Uh, anything is possible. Hey, look at myself. I see it right now. Appreciative. Got the right perspective. I'm grateful. I've been through some things, persevered through some things, but that's life. You know, we all have a story. We all have been through some things. It's allowed us to grow uh, for the betterment of ourselves. And uh, I'm just grateful for the journey. And now I'm going to go to Donnie Green. Sorry. Hey, Antonio, um, how is the 32-year-old Antonio Brown a different football player than the Antonio Brown that broke into the NFL with the Pittsburgh Steelers? How am I different? You said, how am I different? Yes, how are you different? Um, how are you a different player, yeah. Well, I'm just 32 years old, that's it. Hey, AB, appreciate the time. I just wanted to ask you, um, last time you played Kansas City, you know, you were just kind of getting acclimated to playing under Bruce Arian. What's going to be different on Sunday? Well, we look for an opportunity to compete. And uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. All right, we're going to go over to Joseph Volpe. Hey, Antonio, how you doing? How you doing? Good. So you had a chance to live with Tom Brady a little bit heading into the season. Now, when you were there, did you have the chance to try his avocado ice cream? <laughs> That's top secret, man. I can't tell you <laughs> avocado ice cream. All right. We're going to go over to DJ Siddiqui. Hey, Antonio. How's it going? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, obviously, over here in Tampa Bay, you're playing a little bit of a smaller role in Pittsburgh. You were the clear-cut number one go-to guy. What has been the biggest adjustment over here? Well, just being humble, you know, being a great football player, making the most of my opportunities, uh, and channeling my emotions. You know, as a player, you know what you're capable of. You get a little excited and want to do more. Uh, but uh, I had to understand – I came here uh, excited and grateful for any opportunity that I could have. If it was two plays, it was 20 plays. So for me, it's just staying ready. I don't know how many plays I might get. I don't know when is the moment going to be the moment. So I just prepare my mind to be positive and poised and ready for all the outcomes. Obviously, in Pittsburgh, I was seeing 10 to 12 targets a game. And uh, you know how that, what that entails. Okay, we're going to go over to Alex Secchia from ESPN Radio 920. Hey, Antonio, can you hear me? Yeah, hey. How you doing, man? Um, so, you know, training with Tom Brady as far as going into the Super Bowl versus the regular season, uh, can you just, just describe how your training is different as far as taking it right into the Super Bowl with the biggest game of the season? You said how is the training different? 
Yeah, so as far as, you know, regular season into the playoffs, now you're going into Sunday. Uh, how are you elevating your training as far as preparing yourself for this game? Well, your mistakes got to be minimized. And attention to details uh, got to be there. Uh, the poise got to be there. Uh, just on the details, knowing what you're seeing, knowing your assignment, and uh, being details oriented. I think attention to details are, are the big emphasis in playoff games and uh, Super Bowl games and, and being able to minimize your mistake. We're going to go over to Max Hopp from Germany. Hey, thank you. Um, Antonio, I was just wondering, how is it to be around Gronk? Uh, it's super fun to be around Gronk. It's never a dull day. It's locker right next to mine. Uh, affections and personality. Always exciting. Always, always a good time with Gronk. Okay, we're going to go over to Amber Billups. Hey, Antonio, it's Amber with Dallas Morning News. What advice would you give rookie Antonio Brown with all the knowledge you've gained? Uh, I think I'll tell myself, rookie Antonio, just be humble. No matter what phase you get in the NFL, uh, be humble. It's not about the destination and the journey. More so, it's about the company. Have the right company around you. You know, uh, we we'll take now for granted. Uh, this game could be taken to, taken away from any moment, and uh, just maximize your opportunity. Because you never know when you get another opportunity. All right, we're going to go over to Joe Rudder. Yeah, AB, hey, I wanted to ask you a Pittsburgh question here real quick. It's been a while since we've seen you. Um, do you keep in touch with any of your teammates, and do you still have any kind of relationship with Mike Tomlin? Yeah, I keep in touch with a couple of teammates. Uh, definitely still talk to Mike T. Uh, always a leader for me. Always was there for me. and Continue on the journey, you know, being in touch. Okay, we're going to go to Jason Alex Fleming of the Florida Sun. Mr. Brown, how are you doing, sir? I'm good. Excellent. Um, you're surrounded by number one wide receiver talent, and you might be the X factor in the game. Talk to me about Tyler Johnson and how you were able to uh, coach him. Tyler Johnson is a young, exciting player, a lot of energy. Uh, I think for me, it's just uh, being a leader with my action, uh, how I go to work, uh, how do I attack practice, how I attack the meeting room. I think uh, it's been rubbing off on him a little bit. Okay, we're going to go over to Lindsey Jones. Hi, Antonio. Um, this week, last year, during a couple of days ahead of the Super Bowl, Roger Goodell at his State of the NFL press conference said that he was hoping that you'd be able to get some help. Um, what were those conversations you had with Roger like, and what did he ask of you to make sure that you could get back to this point? Well, I really haven't spoke with him uh, up until his press conference yet. Uh, I think they did a good job with the process of helping me, uh, getting me to this point. And uh, I was super grateful about the opportunity to uh, restart my career again and uh, do what I continue to love and, and continue to fulfill my dream uh, as a kid. We're going to go over to Rod Rocha. Hi, Antonio. This is a pleasure. Uh, how do you feel to be now with uh, Tom Brady? I, I'm sure you have responded to this uh, before, but how do you feel of being uh, in the same uh, field with Tom Brady? It's nothing better than that. Okay, we're going to go over to Claudia Gastro. Antonio, it is clear that to win this game, you guys will need to score more than 25, 24 points. One of the big differences in the Chiefs' win over Buffalo were the rushing touchdowns. How much will the offense depend on the running game? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Whatever it takes. Okay, we're going to go over to Jonathan Adams. 
right. Actually, we're going to go over to Joe Ellis. Hey, Antonio. Glad to see you playing again. Um, how is your knee coming along? And do you feel you could be the X factor of bringing the championship to Tampa Bay? We'll see, man. I'm looking forward to the opportunity. All right, we're going to go to Raphael Haynes. Hey, Antonio, it's Raphael Haynes from the Three Point Conversion. Tony, you was here um, in the Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and you were young, and you weren't starting, you know, but, you know, you were kick returner. Now that you're here now and you have players like um, Scotty Miller and the other young players. What is your message to them if they have, you know, if they have any questions or not? And then also, if you score, can we see that dance that you, you hadn't done that dance in about six, seven years, man? Well, for young guys, young players, you know, I just tell them, you know, don't take this moment for granted. You know, it's not easy making Super Bowls. And you think once you first get there, you're going to get there every year, but you realize how hard it is to be in this position. So be on the details and, and maximize your time and preparation. Uh, and I'll see you in the end zone soon. All right, we're going to go to Tyler Comis. Antonio, can you hear me? Yeah, hey. Hey, what's going on, man? Um, can you talk a little bit about the journey that you've gone through to get to this point at, in, in, at this stage in Super Bowl 55? Maybe after the game. It's been a long journey, man, over the course of, you know, a year and a half, uh, scrutiny, uh, adversity, uh, you name it. You know, I've been through it, but it didn't stop me. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't make me want to give up. You know, I just got persistent, uh, made a plan, uh, wrote out my goals, uh, set my intention on, on what I want out of my life, and just took a step back and uh, got refocused, uh, put out a plan, and, and uh, prayed on it, and uh, went out and did it. I was grateful to be in this moment, but I know it's still a long way to go. We have time for a few more. We're going to go over to Mike Jones. Antonio, what do you want your legacy to be? And do you regret that whole year and a half that you went through before this? Well, I want my legacy to be a guy that was persistent, a guy that never gave up, no matter the odds, no matter the hate, uh, no matter the scrutiny, uh, no matter what I went through. Uh, I want my legacy to be Six round kid from Central Michigan. I never gave up. Uh, earned everything he got. Uh, persevered through every adversity, and uh, a guy who had the will or will of a champion. So, for me, you know, everything I've been through uh, prepared me for this position, and uh, prepared me for where I'm at in my life right now. Okay, we're gonna go to Damien O'Donnell. Hey, Antonio, how you doing? How you doing? I don't know if you've seen this yet or you heard about it, but your guy Scotty Miller said you can beat Tyreek Hill in a race. Yeah. So, to place a bet, who you taking? I'm taking my guy Scotty Miller. All right, ready, Andy Snedden. Thank you.